Good morning, good morning, church. Come on, you can do better than this. Good morning, good morning, church. Come on, church, make some noise, make some noise. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Are you excited to be here this morning? Come on, church, I'm going to ask you again. Are you excited to be here this morning? So I would like to ask if you may stand up. Let's worship together. I just wanted to remind you something, okay? Eyes on me, I just want to remind you something. I learned with our pastor, let's be careful, not fearful. So uh, we do respect and uh, we do uh, would like if you can uh, be on your pews and would like if you can, uh, like uh, uh, Emily said last time, the dancing section is temporarily closed. But uh, we would like to tell you something. Even if you are in your pews or whatever you are, you are free to worship this morning. Come on, church. So please don't forget there is hand sanitizer there. Um, the bathrooms are all clean and you guys are safe. Okay, you guys are safe. So please, no shaking hands. Just say hello. Everybody, look at your neighbor say, hey, hello. You know, just look at your neighbor say, hello. Yes. <laughs> but listen, there is no better place than the place that we can worship together. Yes. I miss you guys. I miss my youth. I miss you guys. So let's lift up your hands. Let's pray this morning because I do feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. And I know something is going to happen this morning. Come on, lift up your hands. Let's pray, Lord. We are here in your house to worship. We are here in your house to pray, to give you glory, to give you praise because you are the only one. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and we are here, Lord, together to worship. Even with the coronavirus, we are here to worship. We are here to give you praise, and we are here, Lord, to pray for you to come and show your glory. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. And Jesus, name everybody say hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody lift a shout of praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Our praise becomes your house, your place. Our praise becomes your house, your place. We sing a song and you come in, make a dance and you come in, shout your name, hallelujah, give you praise and you come in, sing a song and you come in, make a dance and you come in, shout your name and you come in, give you praise, you praise, the praise is on your people. Your place, our praise becomes your house, your place, our praise becomes your house, your place, oh God. Somebody bless the Lord. We sing a song. We sing a song and 
you come in. Make the dance and you come in. Shout your name and you come in. Give you praise and you come in. We sing a song and you come in. Make the dance and you come in. Shout your name and you come in. We give you praise. You have it. The praise is all your people. Yes, I will. Oh, my days. Oh, 
Some of you got situations that you're facing and I want you to worship and I want you to praise and as you worship and bless the name of the Lord those situations are going to begin to turn around come on somebody we prophesy to that situation we prophesy to that lost loved one this morning come on I prophesy to your financial situation this morning somebody bless the Lord we prophesy that things are going to begin to change this morning the name of the Lord. Ever start you? 
Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty too. Since when has impossible ever stopped to? This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Hey! This is the saints make a dead man walk again. Hope in the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Hallelujah! Yeah, I hear in this morning somebody prophesied. And it cost a fire Come on Stirring something new You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon hey. Resurrection power Runs in my face too yeah. I believe there's another miracle here in this room This is the sound of troubles rattling this is the praise making dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm going to live, going to live again. This is the sound of tribal adrenaline. Do you hear it this morning? Come on. Oh, I prophesy. That those dry bones are rattling this morning and coming to life, says the Lord. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that He wants to. Just ask the man who was thrown on the bones of Elijah. There's anything that he can do. Just ask the stone that was rolled at the tomb of the God. What happens with the sand of the I feel it moving it now. I feel it doing it now. I feel it doing it now. Do it now. Do it now. Somebody lift a shout of victory this morning. Oh, say I hear the sound. 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 Somebody lift the shout of praise to the Lord. We bless you, Jesus. Yeah. This is what he said. He said, live, live, live. on to the Lord, the Lord. Again. Open the grave, I'm coming out, I'm going to live, going to live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out, I'm going to live, going to live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out, I'm going to live. 
it. Can you shout the name of Jesus? Come on, can you shout the name of Jesus, church? Oh. Lord, thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for the presence in this place. You are so faithful. You are so faithful. Thank you, Holy Spirit, to be present here. Even that we needed to be six feet apart, that we need to be all cautious. Ha, your presence come and change everything. It's so good, Lord, that we can come together in a place that call a temple, that call a sanctuary, that call your house. Because your house is the place to praise, to worship, and come together no matter what. So thankful, Lord, that the doors is open. So thankful, Lord that we are here to worship, see family and friends. And together, we can declare that you are the only one in Jesus' name. Can you say amen, church? Come on, church, can you shout amen? Come on, church, can you shout amen? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Before you see it one more time, if you can look at your neighbor, just a smile to him. Um, uh, just a smile and let's say hi just say hi good to have you here and you can maybe see it um, if your smile is not good I have a good dentist for you but anyway it's so good to be back come on church come on it's so good to be back oh mm. believe it or not um, it is so great to be back there is some church not ready um, in my country Brazil they are not ready they're going to start probably July or something and my pastor said uh, from Brazil he said well why you guys are start opening the church I said oh, because Jesus is America <laughs> I said we start on it we <laughs> we miss church how many of you miss us thank you thank you I miss I hope I could give you a hug but God bless you be careful, not fearful. Okay, I have just a few things. Um, before I say this, I would like to say a really good welcome for those who's watching us online. Come on, church. We have a few people watch us online. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So for who is in the house, um, after service, we have our offering buckets um, on the end. When you leave here or you leave on the back, please, God bless you. You can uh, write the checks payable to BAG. Uh, and also, church, feel free and safe and secure. You can text and give for those is online as well. There is a give button that you can um, as well do brownsville.com slash give. And uh, it's so great that you can bless the house of the Lord and we appreciate. So don't forget when you leave there and as well, we are not having any small groups. Come on, you say, oh, come on church. We are not having any small groups yet, but get ready because we are just to start a new plan, a new something for us to do. I told pastor, I said, pastor, um, I, I, I did a Zoom conference with the youth. And I said, Pastor, I, I kind of like it that. Because when everybody was talking, I just mute all. So I said, thank you very much. <laughs> everybody talking like, and I was just muted then, but I hope I can create this for, for the small groups. But anyway, Wednesdays as well, we still having pastors sharing a good word in the Q&A. So if you have any question, please go online every Wednesday at 7 p.m. It's super good, I tell Ben. If you can take notes, it's super wonderful. God is using our pastor to talk to us. And also, we change a little bit. We are having groceries just on Wednesdays. So Wednesdays on the morning uh, um, section, let's say like this, we are having groceries here at church. If you need, please talk to us at staff. Come here on Wednesday as well. We really would love to help you. And also, Saturday, say Saturday. Oh, Lord. Jeez. Was that in English? Say Saturday. Oh, hallelujah. We are Pentecost. So, Saturday at 1030, we are back on Mission Brownsville. Come on, make some noise, church. Oh! 
So we are back at 10.30. Hmm. Don't start, Ben. We are back on 10.30 a.m. Uh, oh, don't start, Ben. Uh, we are back on uh, uh, Mission Brownsville, and it's going to be... That's... I, I miss church, guys. Don't do that. Um, so let me finish two more, and you start, guys, doing the... We clap our hands. Thanks, um, Anyway, so Friday. Say Friday. So Friday, June 5th. We are going to have an awesome worship night at 7 p.m. So if you miss worship the same that I do, and uh, please come here. Let's have fun, and let's uh, pray and uh, praise and come on Saturday. And the last thing I have, a week from Saturday. Did I say right? I'm learning with my pastor. Man, it took me a while to say that. A week from Saturday, we have a farm share. Come on, church. Come on, church. We have farm share. So don't forget, a week from Saturday, plan to help us uh, uh, on the farm share because God is blessing the house, He's blessing this community. And uh, come on, church, there's nothing better than be on the God's will and the God's place to do the right thing. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? So we're still doing uh, online services. Um, and uh, if you are watching us online, if you are able to come, you can come. We are all safe and secure. And uh, please, um, we are more than welcome to have you. We are not still having not a kids ministry, but we have some some stuff for them there. So there is no excuse for you to not come to church anymore. Come on, church. We are back. Come on. Uh, before we have a special video for um, um, Memorial Day, I would like to tell you something. Um, it is sometimes, um, let, let's say this, in Brazil, real quick, in Brazil, our um, shower pastor is not, it's electric shower. So there is a fuse sometimes, they, they burn the fuse in the middle of your shower, so you have to, to have a cold shower, and it's terrible. I don't like it. So thank the Lord, I'm in America, it's just like hot, cold, and perfect. But do you know that uh, you realize when you miss the hot shower when the cold comes? You know where I'm going? Come on, come on. So, um, I'm sorry church, but I really miss church when the, the season of not having church came. So now when pastor said, let's go to church, we were here like every day. I said, come on, let's get excited. So I want you to get excited because God is here and so good even if we cannot hug each other. You see, the sound system as well meets us. And uh, it's so good that uh, we can come. So you can tell your friends and say, hey, church is open. There is a plenty of space. There is a balcony. There is room for us to come and worship together. So tell your friends, hey, you cannot miss next Sunday. Okay? Amen. Are you happy, church? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm super excited. Let's check this video and let's see how God is doing so good. Amen.
Wow. If that doesn't uh, bring a solemn moment into the house, I don't know what will. We need to thank the families, all those who have sacrificed a loved one with the ultimate price of that of their life. We want to thank those that are veterans here this morning and have served. Now, traditionally, we have you come down and stand here at the front, but we're just going to have you stand where you are. If you have served in our military in any branch of service, would you just stand where you are right now? honor those who are standing right now. Would you all stand with me right now and let's honor them one more time. Come on.
Thank you, gentlemen. Can you thank our color guard this morning? And Andrews Foster as well for playing the trumpet. Thank you. Wow. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we pray for our nation right now. That freedom is not free. That it has come at an extreme cost tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of lives. When we look back at the history of this great country, we realize that this is one nation under God. Scripture all over the Capitol. We pray for our president this morning. Whether we agree with politics or not, he is our president. We respect the office and we thank you for his leadership through this crisis. We pray that you continue to protect him and guide him and give him not just wisdom but godly insight. We pray for our nation and we pray for the state of Florida and our governor, Ron DeSantis. Thank you for his leadership through this crisis and continue to give him wisdom. We pray for Senator Broxson, a member of this church, that you watch over him as he represents us in Tallahassee. We pray for our county of Scambia and neighboring counties as well. The commissioners, the staff that show leadership over this community of Brownsville. And we thank you, O oh God, that each one of us as citizens of these United States have not just a civic duty, but a godly responsibility to lift up those in leadership, to be our part as godly citizens and guide and lead us through this crisis as well. I plead the blood of Christ over our nation, over our state, over our county and over this city. I plead the blood of Christ over this church and this church family. Our households, station angels round about our properties and keep us safe. And we thank you for your protection and your covering. And again, we thank you, O oh Lord, for those that have given the ultimate sacrifice of their lives for this country. We thank you for those veterans, part of this church. Thank you, O oh Lord, for our nation. And we ask your continued blessing upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you say amen to that? Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Wow. I don't know, Deborah, and I've seen a more moving video. That was powerful. So, so powerful. Well, let me just share some things that are happening, as Carlos already talked about. And uh, those of you that are seniors have been getting groceries on Fridays. Uh, we're not doing groceries on weekends any longer. We're going to do it just on Wednesdays because we're starting Mission Brownsville again. And so if you're wanting to come to Mission Brownsville, as you know, we have a service here on Saturdays and we stop that and we're starting it up this Saturday. So at 1030, come here for church. And then as you leave, you will get some bags of goodies, but you'll also uh, get a hot lunch in a to-go container and encourage you to be part of that. And... Um, come on Saturday for this as well. Got a call uh, from FarmShare actually in, in Quincy, which is just outside of Tallahassee. And they said they have all these, it's called farm to table produce. And they had all this produce and wanted to know if we could get it. And I said, love to have it, we'll hand it out. They said, but you gotta come to Quincy and get it. And that's about a three hour drive and you gotta get a truck. And I'm thinking if we did a U-Haul and paid for gas and even had a volunteer driver, it still would cost us more than we could afford. And so I thought, no, we can't do that. And so I thought, well, maybe someone around's got a truck we could borrow. So I called Joey Rogers at Pace Assembly and Joey said, we got a truckload of produce and we can't give it all away. Why don't you come here and get it? <laughs> and I said, well, that would be great. And so I thought, well, I need to, I said, you got a truck? He said, no, our truck is full. We're having it out now. And he said, you need to send a truck to come again. I thought, well, where am I going to get a truck? So I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to call Alyssa at Alyssa's Antique Depot. And so I talked to Alyssa. I said, you got a truck that's done deliveries. Can you help us out? She said, sure. So she sent a truck and a driver and picked up, I think it was two or three pallets, I think, wasn't it, Brenda Lee? Three pallets of uh, produce and uh, brought it and delivered it for us and gave it all out on Saturday. And so, you know, we... 
the phrase I have, we don't turn anything down. <laughs> Someone calls and says, you got something? I go, we'll take it. And so, uh, by the way, this Wednesday, I've announced this real quickly as well, uh, Heather Mooring uh, Avery, her, she did the worship dance Easter. Her mom passed away, and uh, the service is going to be here Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Visitation's at 1030, and uh, come Wednesday if you can. Heather is here and uh, praying for her. And so uh, Joyce Mooring's service will be this Wednesday at 11 o'clock here in the service. And so we got a call from, uh, an email from Sharon Rao and said, my mom needs a walker. Have you got a walker? And then Heather calls and says, my mom has this medical equipment. One of them's a walker. Can you use it? I said, absolutely. So we hooked up Sharon with a walker. I mean, God just provides everything, doesn't he? Isn't that how it works? We know when there are needs, God provides. And so the Lord gave me a promise probably 10 years ago here. Everything you need is in this house. And, and God has been providing for us, and it's been amazing how that all has worked, and it's been just incredible. And so about two weeks ago, I had a conference call with Gold Star Trust Company. Now, Gold Star uh, is the trustee for our bondholders. We're bond, Deborah and I are bondholders, many of you are, and you know that we've been in default with that for about three years now. And uh, so we had a conference call with Gold Star, the vice president, and with uh, Charles Major, the CEO of Share Financial, and Share uh, handled the sale of all of our bonds for our debt. And, as you know, when I came here 10 years ago, it was over 14 years ago, it was over 10 million. We have it down to 3.8. And then what they're going to do is uh, redo and do a modification of the bond issue. So you're going to be getting a letter, uh, if you're a bondholder, in June for a modification. I have to vote for it. And you send in your ballot. We have, as I said, almost $900,000 in escrow that Gold Star has been ready to disperse, but they wanted to make sure that what they did and the plan they came up with, we could afford. And so when I came, our mortgage payment was 83,000 a month. Then it, we got it refinanced down to 54. Then we got it financed down to 35. Then we got it financed down to 27. And with the modification, they'll come down to 19. Isn't that good news? So that is good. And uh, at the end of the modification, uh, we'll have about one and a half million in debt left, which is gonna be amazing. And we're gonna disperse that fund, so you'll get some money from that, from the modification towards your bond uh, that you have, so that's a good thing. And you'll get a letter explaining it all. But here's how they put it in perspective for me. So I love this, and let's just look at this for a minute. So when I came, here's the amount of interest. We had $2,436 of interest accruing every day on over $10 million, every day. So when I woke up in the morning, when I got here, we owed another $2,400. Uh, then we did the modification or the bond issue and it's 3.8 million. It was $812 per day. That's a lot better than 2,400. Well, with this modification, the interest is gonna drop to $300 a day. So it's going the right way. It's really going the right way. So I'm happy about that. And uh, I remember the very first time I shared about the mortgage payment and the need and the debt and so on. And uh, one of our pastors on staff came to me after service and said, we don't do that here. We don't tell people about our debt and our costs. I said, it's their church. They need to know they're the ones paying the bill. We got to tell you and if you don't know how you can help and deal with it. How can you pray? And I really believe God's dealt with this because we have worked at this together. And you have been faithful in your stewardship. And I want to thank you for that. And, and it's been amazing what God has done. So it's heading in the right direction. Uh, bond payments are going out. So you're going to get dollars and cents, which you haven't had. Uh, if it's accrued interest, it's going to be compounded. And you'll get a statement on that. And, and it's all coming. So I am so, so happy. Um, here's, the, here's the bottom line for me. In 14 years, this is the first time I felt like we're getting in a good place. It's, it's a good place, and we're able to handle it. And, and the shift has been this, and I'm excited about this fall because of this. What's happening is we are moving from trying to survive to moving into vision and fulfilling what God's called us to do. So whereas I've had, and, and this is sad, this is a tough one, I've had people predict our demise a numerous times. And I've had people speak badly about us that we're not gonna make it, it's not gonna happen, it's over, it's bad, it's this, it's that. God is not finished with us yet. God is doing something in this house. 
And it's amazing how everything has come together and what God's putting together. So before we, so as you leave today, that's the, this is the offering appeal to help us with dollars and cents. And you've been amazing and so faithful. There are boxes at each of the exits. And please give your tithes and offerings. If you need an envelope, it's there in the pew rack in front of you. Make your checks out to BAG. And we appreciate your faithfulness and your stewardship. And you've actually been amazing with all of that. So there's a, a young man that's been in the news uh, as a victim of coronavirus. He's in California and Los Angeles, but his occupation's been an actor on Broadway, and he's a Tony Award winner. His name's Nick Cadero, and he is the brother-in-law of my niece. And Annie, my niece, has been texting Deborah and asking for prayer, and she is the daughter of my brother who passed away a couple years ago, a year and a half ago. And she's been asking for prayer and praying for him, and he's been fighting for his life. Young man in his early 30s, young dad, I think his baby's what, two? One, one-year-old baby. And his wife is there in, in Los Angeles, and he's in hospital, and um, just been in a coma for a month. And, and it, he's waking up, he's responding. And, and they've given him up this past week. They said, call the family, he's not gonna make it 24 hours. He's still alive and he's now responding and God's doing some things, but there's a real testimony there and there's an effect. It was on the uh, entertainment section front page of USA Today a week ago, his story. And uh, a lot of people know Nick Cadero is this Broadway actor, but he is a person with a soul that Jesus died for. And we're believing God for his healing. So I wanna be able to tell my niece, we prayed for him in church today. So let, before we look into the word, let's just pray for just a moment. So Father, we pray for Nick in hospital in Los Angeles. He is a person who you love and Jesus you died for. Heal his body, bring him to life, restore his lungs, do a creative miracle in his lungs so that he is able to breathe properly without any issue or concern. And we thank you for your healing for Nick this morning. Let the doctor say something happened this past Sunday where he turned around and started a progressive healing in his body. And we thank you for the miracles that are there for him right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Do you agree? I do too. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah in the Old Testament. Powerful story. And the message I want to share with you is how not to make a mistake in life. I don't know about you. I've made plenty of them. And I'd love to not make any more. So if you want to not make mistakes, I love, I love these pictures of mistakes. Uh, let's take a look at the first one. Let's see what, now that's a, that's a mistake of something that happened here with this car. Let's go to the next one. Um, yeah, it fell over. It's unbelievable. Keep going. They've got these in the back order here. I like this one. The bridge didn't quite meet here. They missed it. That's a big mistake. I like the engineers there with the plans. What did we do wrong? What happened here? All right. Let's, let's take a look at the next one. How do I tell my mom I got a hammer stuck in my mouth? I like that. You see that one, Ben? Take a look at that one. That's, any of your kids ever done that? No, thank goodness. That, that, that looks like a Daniel trick to me, doesn't it? I, hopefully he's not watching. No suggestions for that one. All right, let's take a look at the next one. I like this. Uh, I don't know how the car got on the roof or in the escalator. I just don't know how that happened. But those are big. Yeah. Dad, thanks for loaning me the car. I got one thing to tell you. <laughs> I like that. Uh, just pretty crazy things. I don't know if that's the end of them or not. Uh, yeah, this is one here. Now, this one, let's go back to that first one. That's one we should have started with there, Gabe. The car's in the water on the left, so they bring a crane to get it out. So then the crane, the next one, is pulling up the car. And then as it pulls up the car, it's bringing it up to the ground. And then all of a sudden, uh, the crane goes in the... I'd like to be the crane operator. Whoops. <laughs> Emily, that's a big whoops, I'll tell you, that's, that's a big one. Make mistakes that you make in life. Now, I want us to understand that the first thing we need to know on how to not make a mistake in life is this. It's very simple. I believe God has a plan for everyone's life. God has a perfect plan for your life. And if you follow that perfect plan, you won't make a mistake. You follow the plan of God you're gonna be mistake free. So in understanding the plan of God, you've gotta be wanting to do the plan of God. You have to have a will to do the plan of God. And how do you do that? We need to understand our will and how we're created. Now, it says in Genesis that God created us in his image, in his image. And the word soul in the Greek is a, is a word suke. 
If you wanted to spell it phonetically, it's P-S-U-C-H-E with an accent on the E. And that means our suke, our minds. Francis Schaeffer, great theologian, wrote a book called Genesis of Man, another one called Escape from Reason. And in Schaeffer says the uniqueness of humanity is that we have two characteristics that are the image of God, that only God has the capability and only humanity has an image of that. And we are able to have these two functions that only God has, and we're the only creature that has it. Every other creature on earth operate out of instinct. We, however, have three unique characteristics and of our soul, and that is our mind, our will, and our emotions. Our mind is our thoughts, our will are our choices, and emotions are our feelings. Schaefer says you have the capacity to reason and our capacity to love. So here's the battleground of the soul. The soul is where the enemy attacks us. We end up with thoughts we shouldn't have, choices we shouldn't make, and feelings we shouldn't feel. That's where the struggle is. And we need to understand our will is our choices. It's our choices we decide. Now here's the question. Why did God give us a will to choose? Simply, there's value in our choices. When we choose things, it tells God what's important to us. The best way to understand that and illustrate it in our relationship with God is I love this story. Let's imagine there's a brilliant scientist in electronics and robotics, and her name is Deborah. Just happens to be Deborah. She's going, what are you going to tell about me? Yeah. And she's brilliant. She's absolutely amazing. She can create all kinds of robots and robotics. And, and so she creates this robot that's just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, he's got muscles everywhere. He's beautiful. He's phenomenal. And she programs this robot, this guy, to love her and only love her and serve only her. Then another guy comes along. He's not quite so perfect. He's a little overweight. And he's got a bit of a heart condition. And his name's Evan. But he chooses to love her, which has more value. The one who's programmed or the one who chooses. You see, God gave us the capacity to choose because there's value in our will. There's importance in our choices. When I talk to pastors and boards of other churches and they want to talk about vision casting and, and, and setting goals and, and having objectives and wanting to accomplish their mission and vision, and they tell me all these great vision statements, I say, show me your financial statement from last year and I'll show you what your priorities are. We can say what our priorities are. We can worship God all we want. We can praise God and sing and dance and shout. But if our actions and our behavior don't illustrate our devotion and love to God, we really haven't chosen to love him at all. It's our choices that make the difference. It's our choice, there's value in what we choose. So in the book of Nehemiah, we understand how to make those choices. Now, Nehemiah, son of a priest, he's a priest himself, and he is a citizen of Israel. He's of the Israel race, but he's in exile in Assyria. And he has a responsibility that comes his way. He actually ends up becoming the cupbearer to the king, a pretty responsible and trusted position, very influential. And so in chapter one of Nehemiah, the second verse, he asks a simple question, what's happening back home? What's going on back in Israel? What's happening in Jerusalem? And in verse three, he gets the answer. And the answer is those who survive, those who are still living, they're in trouble. They're not doing well. The walls of Jerusalem are broken down, the gates are burned, and now he has an issue. Because Jerusalem to a Jew is significant. It's like the White House is to an American. It represents their home. And when he heard that, it changed his life, it spoke to him. I wanna tell you this morning, asking a simple question of God can change your life. All you have to do is say, God, what is your will for me? What do you want me to do? How am I doing in all of this? What's going on in my life? What do you want me to do? You open the door and ask God a simple question. I wanna tell you, you're gonna be amazed at the answer because God will answer you. So here he prays and he says in verses six and 11, let your ear be attentive 
And I want to tell you, God is listening when you pray. God heard Nehemiah, and God listened to you. He confesses his sin, and he talks about his mistakes, and he says, do you remember? And it says in verse 8, God remembers. Now we go to chapter 2 of Nehemiah, and let's see what happens further. This is the cupbearer to the king, and he's before the king, which he's supposed to have a good attitude, a straight face. And he is downcast. And he expresses it. And the king asks, what do you want? What do you want? You see, when you open a door and ask God to help you in your life, he'll simply say, well, what do you want? What do you want to do? Do you want to know something? Do you want to move somewhere? Do you want to serve? What's going on in your life? In Psalm 37, verse 4, it says, God gives us the desires of our heart. What is your heart's desire? You need to open your heart and confess to him. And as you do that, all of a sudden, God will start answering. Now, I believe this about Nehemiah, and I think this is a principle. So let me tell you, here's what I see in the Old Testament over and over and over again. Something happens to someone in their life, and God involves himself in their lives. And as it gets recorded and written down, it then becomes a principle, an application, or a pattern for us to follow in our lives. So Nehemiah, this is a true story. It's how God helped him and God helped Israel and rebuilt the city of Jerusalem. And out of that real life situation, we learn some key principles for our lives. He asks God, what he could do. God says, what do you want? He said, I want to go back home. I believe God gave him the burden that started when he asked about what was happening back in Jerusalem. And now God wants to help him with that burden that he has. God will give you a burden for ministry. God will speak to you. It was interesting. I got a text from Dennis on Monday. He said, it's staff, after staff meeting tomorrow, I want to meet with you. It's really important. And I said, I want to meet with you as well. So after staff, we, well, we actually we got together before staff meeting, and, and I said, let me tell you, I said, the Lord laid it on my heart yesterday that we need to go back to Mission Brownsville and reopen the service in here on Saturday. He said, that's exactly what I wanted to ask you about. You see, God says the same thing. He doesn't say one thing to one person and something else to another. It's congruous. It works together. It doesn't work in opposite directions. It works in symmetry together. So God has a vision for you. All you have to do is open your heart and say, Lord, what do I need to do? And so he now goes back to Jerusalem. He's a cup bearer for the king, not a builder. It believe, we believe that he never had seen Jerusalem until this time, but he had a heart for it. So God is giving you the desire of your heart. In Romans 12, verse 1, it says, To offer yourself as a living sacrifice, this is... God's will. Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not harm you. I believe God has a plan for you. One of my favorite messages is that everyone is called. You're all called, but sometimes few of us listen. Are you listening to the call of God? How do you not make a mistake in your life? Listen and follow the call and the plan of God for your life. Because I believe when you're in the center of God's will, you're happy. I believe that when you're following the will of God, there's a fulfillment that comes. Now, it's hard to find someone from Pensacola. How many here have been, you were born and raised in Pensacola? All right, we got about seven. <laughs> Bobby, you were born and raised in Pensacola? That's awesome. But born and raised in Pensacola. So I'm a northerner, and I come south. And it's interesting. One of the first things I had to learn about southern food, it's either fried or it has gravy on it, or both. Chicken fried steak with gravy. I remember we were here, our first weekend here, I love this, our first weekend here, we're going through Steak and Shake, and it's in the morning, and Deborah wants an unsweet iced tea with real lemon, and so I go to the drive-thru of Steak and Shake, and I said, 
I like a large unsweet iced tea with three pieces of lemon. You want three pieces of chicken? We don't serve chicken in the morning. I said, no, a large, unsweet iced tea with three pieces of lemon. Chicken, we don't serve. Finally, Deborah leaned over and she said, I want a large, unsweet iced tea with three pieces of lemon. Oh, lemon, you want lemon. Transferring from one culture to another, from the north to the south, from this country to another country. I, I, lo I love Carlos's accent. And when he first started sharing and transitioning and, and, sh and speaking, he, he would come after service and go, all right, how many times did I make a mistake? <laughs> I think the first time we actually met, you couldn't speak English at all. It was pretty wild. Yeah, we had a translator. But when, you do, when you're walking in the center of God's will, he'll get you there. He'll take you where he wants you to go. He'll get you there. And it's exciting to see where that... Now, here's the other thing. God will never give you the end of the journey at the beginning. You know, it's a trust issue, isn't it? I, I mean, if I, if I knew what I was getting into, I don't know if I'd ever come down here. <laughs> I, my first Sunday morning here in June of 06 was interesting, and we just fell in love. And then Sunday night, I ended up seeing the financial statements of the church, and I went, oh, my goodness. That was a dirty trick, fell in love before I found out how bad it was. But, you know, God takes you one step at a time, and God provides for you. God will never lead you where he won't provide for you. He will take care of you in that journey, but he won't give you the end of the journey before from the beginning. It's one step at a time. It's a trust factor. It's leaning upon him and letting him lead you through all of this. It, it's interesting. There, there's this thing out there, and you've heard this. Some of you saints have heard this before, and I want to make sure we understand this for a minute. There's a difference between God's perfect will and God's permissive will. God's permissive will is really kind of a nice road, I think. I've, I've never had the luxury of that. But permissive will is, you love God. You, you've got Jesus in your heart. You're going to heaven. I mean, it's, it's good. You're not in sin. You're not living in immorality. You're not stealing. You're not a bad guy. You're not a bad lady. But, but you're just tootling along, doing your own thing, saying, okay, God, bless me, bless me, bless me. God's perfect will is where you say, you know what? This job looks like a good one, but I'm not going to take it until I know it's from you. This direction is a good one, but I'm not going to go there unless I hear. God's perfect will is where you don't take steps without him leading you. God's permissive will is taking steps and asking God simply to bless them. God's permissive will is you're driving, he's a passenger. God's perfect will, he's the driver and you're the passenger. As Cho says in Korea, he is not just a resident, he's the president. He's in charge and he's leading you and he's guiding you. And it's what's gonna happen, it's understanding that direction. And, and here's what happens, the simple steps in discovering God's will is you surrender. You purpose in your heart to surrender it. You give it all to him. And so you say, Lord, I'm gonna just surrender everything I have. You, you practice communion and intimacy, and it's knowing God's voice, it's hearing God's voice. And, and I hear God's voice quite often when we're in worship. A song rattling, I mean, that was, oh my goodness, it was powerful. And I'm hearing God say, I'm still here in this house. I still have plans for you. I'm still with you as a church. I'm still with you as a pastor. I'm still with everybody in this congregation. I still have a plan for Brownsville. I kept hearing this word and this download coming again and again and again through that worship. I don't know about you, but when I open my heart to him and I let my heart rise to him and I let him come down in my life, I hear things from the spirit of God that I know, that I know, that I know. I'm in the perfect will and plan of God. That's the desire. That's the heart's cry. That's what we need in our lives. My prayer for you today is this. You will get in the center of his will. It's not just God help me out of this mess and sh bless this thing that I'm doing and I want to do it. No, it's God, show me your perfect will. 
How do you not make a mistake in life? You just surrender to the will, plan, and purpose of God. The best way to discover the will of God is to let the Spirit of God fill you. Oh my. It takes a lot of work out of it. Before I was Spirit-filled, it was kind of like this. Feeling my way along, trying to find the hand of God. But when the Spirit of God came and filled my soul, and He moved, I moved powerful. No question. You hear his voice clearly. Now let me tell you the difference between the enemy's voice and God's voice. The enemy's voice is this. Evan, this is the voice of God. Do this now. Jump. And it's loud and it's strong and you go, no, nah, I'm not sure it is. This is really the voice of God. Yes, it is. You got, and it starts to get weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. If it's God's voice, here's what it sounds like. His voice starts in your soul as that whisper. This is the Spirit of God. My hand is upon you, my child. I'm going to lead you and guide you. I'm with you. I will not forsake you. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is this really you, God? Yes, this is me, and the voice gets louder. God, I really want to make sure it's you. This is the voice of your Lord, your God. And you hear it and you know that you know it's deep in the depth of your soul. It's in your gut. And you cannot mistake that voice of God. It just sits and gets greater and greater. The enemy dissipates and fades because all it is is this. Just talking air. And you hear God's voice clearly. And he directs your path and you want to be filled. And so my concern for you is this, that you let the Spirit of God fill your being, spirit, soul, and body, your mind, your will, and your emotions, and you hear God, and he fills you. John Ogilvy, in his book on God's will, he says this, when you're following the will of God, it is the future without fear. Think about that. The will of God in your life being fulfilled becomes the future without fear. You don't fear tomorrow. Fear doesn't ravage you. Fear doesn't direct you. Fear doesn't intimidate you. Tomorrow is okay because it's in God's hands. I, I tried. I can't turn the page on tomorrow till tomorrow comes. I don't know about tomorrow until it comes. But I want to tell you, God is not bound by time. He's standing there in heaven, and he looks at us today, and he sees tomorrow and the next day and the next day, and he already has it planned out. And when you put your trust in him, guess what? No fear. No fear. So here's the questions this morning as we close. What is God asking of you? Are you listening to what God is asking of you? God's will for you, his perfect will. You need to hear his voice and be obedient to it. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray that everyone here would submit anew and afresh to the perfect will of God in their life. That you will come in a powerful way and bring a fulfillment of your will in their lives. For those that are struggling with direction, I pray in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit would whisper to them that plan for the future, the next step, the call of God. I pray that you would remove the wax in our ears so that we can hear your voice. Things that are stopping us from hearing you. And I pray in the name of Jesus, that those that are here that are struggling with life today, that they would come into a relationship with Jesus. Because only Christ can give us purpose and direction. That you died on the cross for us. That we might have life and have it abundantly. And I thank you for the fulfilling of that plan and that call upon us. We receive it now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want to sing rattling. <laughs> I think we need to. What do you think? Hey, need Carlos up here to do that? Let's do it. Yeah, come on. All right, let's do it. I love it. That is so good. Wasn't that a powerful song? 
I mean, I want us to go out of here singing that. I want when you leave and walk out of this place, it just resonates in your spirit. You'll find it on Spotify or on iTunes or whatever and play it in your car, in your home all week long. And let it fill your spirit. Deborah leaned over and we were singing it and she said, that's a word for Nick. His dry bones are going to live. His bones are going to live. And it's a word for you. Let's stand together and sing it together. Saturday was silent. Surely it was through. Yeah. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment, Sunday's empty too. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones yeah, it is. Come on. This is the phrase, make a dead man walk again. Hope in the grave, I'm coming out. I'm going to live, going to live again. This is the sound of dry bones at lay. Pentecost of fire, stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. And resurrection power runs in my veins too. Yeah. I believe there's another miracle here in this room. This is the sound of Bible rattling. This is the praise making dead man walk again. The man who was thrown on the bones of Elijah. If there's anything that he can do, yeah. just as the stone that was rolled at the tomb in the garden. What happens with God? Says no. Let the dead man walk again. Yeah. 
Every day, every morning we wake up, we go to work, we drive down the highway, but that sound would resonate in our soul. Thank you, Lord, for guiding and leading us and filling us and saving us. We do not take it for granted. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For those going through a difficult time this morning right now, I pray that you would lift them up, that those dry bones would come alive in the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord, for miracles and signs and wonders. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for those watching right now online, that your Holy Spirit would go through these airwaves into their home and their household. There would be resurrection power in those homes. Each and every one of us hearing the clear voice of God, calling us by name. And we give thanks to you for your mercy and your grace and your perfect will and presence in our lives. Be with us as we go from this house, we pray. In the strong name of Jesus, we ask. Can you shout amen? amen. Can you shout hallelujah? Can you shout praise the Lord? God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. If you need prayer, I'm gonna be right here and be glad to pray with you. God bless you as you go. This is the sound of the devil 